بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم this presentation for uh, showing the students in the second year how to draw the required uh, drawings for the final practical exam first of all you should have these equipments you should have the uh, colored pencils the uh, purple and the pink one uh, together with the, the uh, ordinary pencil and the sharpener eraser and the red and blue uniball for more demarcation of nuclei or fibers uh, what is the criteria of a good histology drawing four criteria and this will be marked by two marks the quality of the drawing no interruption no deficiency no uh, sketch drawing uh, clear single lines uh, proper colors the acidophilic should have the red and uh, the basophilic should have the blue. Uh, blue uh, proper ratios between the different layers or the different components of uh, uh, cell. Uh, proper labeling, of course. The uh, degree for the drawing will be two marks, uh, taking in, consider in consideration these uh, four criteria. Let's start by the thyroid folk first. You should draw the outline of the follicle and then you will draw the uh, simple or one layer of uh, cubical cells with central rounded nuclei basophilic cytoplasm. And uh, you will draw also this uh, uh, C cell or the clear cell which is pale stained and not uh, reaching the lumen of the follicle. Now we have completed the whole lining of the follicle now you will draw the pink coloration for the colloid so the colors are proper the ratios are proper and of course you will make your labels and it is a good quality for drawing it is not interrupted the lines are not interrupted not overlapping uh, and this will complete uh, the picture the appearance of these uh, uh, sinusoids in surrounding the follicle and some interfollicular cells which are uh, uh, belonging to the follicle but tangentially cut then we have the zona fasciculata in the endocrine system also first you will draw one cell which is um, uh, polyhedral and with a central rounded nucleus of course blue and we have here a uh, slight vacuoles or uh, uh, pale demarcated vacuoles and here we have uh, the outline of the cell with the red color acidophilic then you will draw another cell some of the cells may have two nuclei then you will complete the two rows of the cells uh, taking in consideration to uh, form this uh, vacuolation in the cytoplasm and some of the cells have uh, two nuclei then don't forget to draw the fenestrated straight capillaries in between these rows of cells now we have finished at least four rows for the zona fasciculata and don't forget the labels spongiocytes uh, fenestrated capillary you can also label the nucleus uh, you can also label a uh, vacuolated cytoplasm now the fundic gland first of all you will draw the outline of the gland by the red line by the uh, red pencil then you will draw the lining of the surface and of the pit with the columnar cells with basal oval nuclei then you will draw the parietal cells the parietal cells here will be acidophilic with central rounded not reaching the lumen and it is present mainly in the upper half of the gland here we have the pit and now we entering the uh, main uh, or the uh, gland itself isthmus neck and base and here in this uh, area isthmus neck you will draw the parietal cells in the uh, neck you will draw also the columnar cells but these columnar cells will not be like the surface columnar cell it will be the uh, mucus neck cells which have uh, the uh, 
فلات نيوكلياي أو تريانجلر نيوكلياي. so and shorter than the cell. يعني دي جس one should be longer than this one. the surface epithelium is longer than the mucous neck. the parietal cells are present in the isthmus and in the neck mainly of the gland. some present also in the base. but I finished here the pit and then I start to draw the isthmus and the neck. In the neck we have the mucous neck cell and the parietal cells. In the isthmus also we have the surface epithelial cell and the parietal cell. Then we have in the base you will draw the peptic cells, basophilic cells with base of rounded nuclei and uh, you can draw them as uh, uh, pyramidal cells or triangular cells um, with the basal rounded nuclei. Now, this is the final picture here. We have finished uh, the uh, drawing of all the cells. The, the basal part here is formed of the uh, peptic cell and in the isthmus and in the neck we have the uh, parietal cell. In the neck we have, in addition to the parietal, the mucous neck cell and in the surface and in the pit together with the isthmus we have um, the surface epithelial cell isthmus also contains parietal cell uh, so this is the final picture for the funding gland then you should draw the labels as regards the cells and the zones uh, this is the pit of the gland and the start of the gland in which we have surface epithelial cells, it is the isthmus, and the middle part of the gland in which we we'll draw the mucous neck cells is the neck, and this is the base of the gland. Then you should label the different types of the cells, surface mucous cells, the parietal cell, the mucous neck cell, and the peptic cell. Now this is the small intestine crypt. In the small intestine crypt, you should uh, draw this uh, uh, tube-like gland by the red pencil, and then you will draw the lining epithelium of uh, uh, surface epithelial cells, which are provided with this uh, uh, microvilli or the brush border, and we have the uh, goblet cells. And in the base, you will do, we will draw the panis cells, which are pyramidal with basal rounded, basal uh, basophilic part, but the apical part shows the acidophilic granules. Then you should make the labeling as regards the connective tissue, the different types of the cells, absorptive cells, and the goblet cell and the panis cells. This is the picture final for the crypt. Of the small intestine. Now this is the large intestine crypt. The same thing. It's a, a tube, very long and wide tube, and you will draw the uh, columnar absorptive cells and the goblet cells. And the goblet cells here will be so numerous, so frequent to be seen. Uh, here we can draw this lymphatic follicle in close relation to the crypt, and it is located in the connective tissue. So you will label the different types of cells, goblet cells, and the columnar absorptive cell, and the connective tissue here, and the lymph follicle. Now the villus, it is the uh, projection on the surface, finger-like projection, and then you will draw the central lactyl, which is a lymph vessel, and you will draw the flat uh, squamous cells, and the connective tissue uh, fibers, and the cells will be in the form of uh, blue dots. You can draw the dots by the unipole uh, blue pen. And then you will draw the different cells, columnar absorptive cells with the microvilli and the basal oval nucleus, uh, red cytoplasm. And then you will draw also in between the goblet cells. So this is the final picture and then you will make a shadowing for the connective tissue, very slight shadowing for the connective tissue uh, core of this uh, villus. So this is a simple columnar absorptive cell with brush border and this is the goblet cell, connective tissue corium, central lactyl. Again, it is much magnified picture. Don't forget also to draw these uh, capillaries 
in the connective tissue so you have a central lactyl and the capillaries in addition to the fibers and the uh, blue dots here representing the connective tissue cells now you will move to the salivary acini you have the serous we have the mucus and mucoserous serous is small this is larger and this is more large starting with the serous this is the basophilic and this is uh, will have a red outline at one part and a blue a blue at uh, other part to form the demilune and this is also the mucus will be all of the red color now you will draw the just the tips of the cells uh, and uh, this is very faint demarcation for you in order to make these uh, tops so we have one two three four five one two three four five six cells uh, and these very pale uh, lines very faint lines and then you will draw the nuclei with the nucleolus and shading the uh, cytoplasm of the cells with the blue color uh, now you are uh, uh, finished with the uh, salivary acinus serous but uh, you should uh, draw these uh, red secretory granules or zymogen granules by the red uh, pencil now you will draw the mucoserous here we have this uh, area for the serous demilion and you will draw this uh, uh, bl blue background for the serous cells and then you will draw the nuclei of the serous cells then the outline of the mucus cells by the red color and then you will draw the vacuoles of the mucus and the basal flat nuclei then it is finished now the mucoserous acinus with the uh, serous demilion but still we should draw here uh, some of the zymogen granules inside by the red color uh, then finally we have uh, the mucus you will draw the uh, cells to be here in the form of uh, cuboidal cells and we have the basal flat nuclei and the vacuoles inside here also uh, this is a picture of the serous demilion with the uh, red granules inside so these are the three types of the acini the serous and the mucus and the mucoserous and this is the serous demilion and this is the uh, mucus cell here we have uh, no boundaries evident but here the evident boundaries and here we have vacuoles here we have the red uh, zymogen granules now the pancreatic acinus you will draw the outline of the acinus at first representing the different types of cells and then you will draw the tips of these cells to be corresponding to this uh, outline try to make it perfect and then you will draw the uh, epical part of the cells actually the cells are not well demarcated from each other as it is a type of serous acinus and you will draw the major part with the red color here uh, as you see and then the uh, peripheral part with the blue color and don't forget the basal rounded nuclei so this is the final picture also in the uh, red part you should uh, draw this uh, acidophilic zymogen granules now the portal tract here you will draw the outline of the tract uh, to be between uh, three hepatic globules just these three lines then you will draw the major three structures which is the branch of the portal vein branch of the hepatic artery and the bile duct here in the artery you will make the uh, narrow lumen and uh, folded and then you will draw the nuclei of the smooth muscles and of the epithelium here we have the red coloration representing the media and then the wall of the vein is thin with uh, rbc's or blood inside and here we have the flat nuclei of the endothelium and here we have the simple cubical epithelium with central rounded nuclei of the bile duct and don't forget also to make uh, a very tiny structure which is a lymph vessel exactly like a capillary and we are left with the, the connective tissue you will draw the red fibers and the blue 
nuclei oval nuclei of the fibrocytes the uh, unipole can help you in uh, drawing these uh, nuclei very rapidly now the malpighian renal corpuscle you will draw the outline with uh, the uh, faint coloration the entry of the afferent arteriole the outlet uh, or the exit of the uh, efferent arteriole and the boundaries of the glomerulus and this is the uh, exit of the proximal convoluted tubule then you will make this uh, lining by simply squamous epithelium which is the parietal layer of the Bowman's capsule then you will draw a regular uh, structures representing the blood capillaries by the red color in this uh, area you have demarcated by the faint coloration and then you will draw uh, inside rbc's in the wall the flat nucleus of endothelium on the top you have the nuclei of the podocytes which represent the visceral layer of the bowman's capsule and in between stellate shaped cells representing the mesange mesangial cells now it is uh, complete here we have to uh, complete the uh, drawing of the proximal convoluted tubule by these uh, uh, pyramidal cells, acidophilic, with the uh, rounded nuclei and the brush border, as you see, in the top of these cells. Then you have to make the labeling, the parietal layer, the efferent, the afferent, the capillaries, mesangial cell a blood here we have endothelium here we have the uh, these nuclei are nuclei of the podocytes or the visceral layer of uh, capsule space and this is the urinary pool and this is the vascular pool this is the proximal convoluted tubule proximal and distal convoluted tubule the proximal should be larger in diameter than the distal and narrower in the lumen so that try to prepare them with a faint color at the start then you will draw the nuclei of the cells no more than five cells here in the proximal convoluted tubule and in this area you will uh, use the unipole to make the basal acidophilic striation and the apical brush border then you will make the shadowing for the cytoplasm with the uh, pink pencil and then you are left with the uh, demarcation of the nuclei with the unipole to be very evident and the nucleolus as you see then we have to draw the distal convoluted tubule try to make the uh, number of cells not more than nine cells try to make it that and to make the cells uh, are cubical shorter than these cells so the lumen here is so wide although it is of a smaller diameter than this here the nuclei with the unipole and we are now uh, moving to the seminiferous tubule seminiferous tubule you will draw uh, just a sector between two sertoli cells they are pyramidal faint uh, coloration and this is the base membrane and these are the myoid cells then you will draw the first row of the spermatogonia rounded cells then you will draw the second row larger cells which are the primary and those are smaller cells and these are the tails of spermatocytes so this is the picture uh, drawn by the uh, red pencil then you will draw the nuclei this is oval in the sertoli and uh, appear to be vertical here this is oval but uh, they are parallel or uh, any horizontal or parallel to the base membrane and these are oval nuclei here we have the large nucleus of the largest cell and it shows the coarse chromatin these uh, uh, irregular uh, threads of the chromosomes and uh, then we have uh, the uh, spermatids which should uh, have a central uh, rounded dark nuclei very important to be dark nuclei here in these uh, cells and then the head of uh, the sperms now by the unipole i uh, make these uh, nuclei more evident especially those of the 
primary spermatocyte, the nucleus here, but also by the newly bull, it's more evident. Now the Graafian fork. You will draw the outline to be oval in shape mostly, and then inside we have a circle that will surround the secondary oocyte. Here we have the nucleus, nucleolus, and the secondary oocyte, and then this area is much thicker, uh, which is the zona pellucida. Uh, after that, I will draw very faintly an outline for the cells to be drawn in this Graafian follicle. I will draw on the zona pellucida these columnar cells, which are the corona radiata. Then, in the area here, I will draw other rounded cells surrounding this uh, corona radiata, and I will fill this area with uh, rounded cells, which are the zona granulosa here in this area. Uh, not all of it because the, the time may not be uh, adequate for that, but try to finish a part, a part, so that if you have more time, you can complete the picture. Here you should uh, draw the uh, theca interna and theca externa outside this base membrane. Here we have cellular structure with blood capillaries, and here we have fibrous structure. Now uh, it's time to put the nuclei for the corona radiata, for the granulosa cells, for the theca interna, and the uh, fibroblast of the theca externa. If you have time, you can complete the picture. But finish the labeling before completing the picture. Now we have the LS in the chorionic villus. You will draw these um, two uh, lines to uh, demarcate the thickness of this uh, chorionic villus. And here you will draw another line in between to arrange the side to trophoplast in the form of cubical cells with the central rounded nuclei. And then you will draw the sensitive trophoplast with this uh, uh, pink coloration, and then you will draw the nuclei. Here, the nuclei of the sensitive trophoplast. Then you will draw some blood outside, some blood inside the blood capillary of the fetus. Here we have the lining epithelium of the blood capillary, flat squamous, and here we have the fibers. And here you will put cells which are half power cells, the uh, fibroblast nuclei, and the nuclei of endothelium, and now it is finished. LS in chorionic vellus. Now we have the endometrium proliferative and secretory phase. Uh, try to make um, an outline for yourself in order to uh, yeah, in order to complete your drawing in a good time. Here we have uh, the uh, tubes uh, representing the endometrial gland, and then we have various sections in the endometrial glands also, and here we have uh, the sections in arterioles, or here uh, coiled arterioles, and here in this situation you should uh, sharpen your pink color, and you will draw the cells on the surface, columnar, and enter inside the endometrial gland. No need to finish all the glands, you can make all, only one and the surface is complete. Here we, if I have time, I will um, make a lining of the other sections in the endometrial glands. And now I should make the fibers of the connective tissue here, and then the nuclei of the fibroblast, and the nuclei of the cells. Some of the cells on the surface will have uh, uh, cilia, but those inside the tube will not have cilia, they are only secretory. So here the picture is finished. If you have time, uh, you can complete the lining, but more than comple completion of the lining, you should make the labels. This is the epithelium, simple columnar partially ciliated and partially secretory, and this is the endometrial gland, this is the connective tissue here, and these uh, are the blood vessels. Now the secretory phase also make a landmark for your drawing and uh, or a guidelines for your drawing, and then the glands will have this appearance, corkscrew appearance, and the blood vessels will be so much uh, enlarged here. Now the lining of the surface is the same as before, simple columnar partially ciliated, 
partially secretory and the glands here you should uh, uh, you can draw this uh, second uh, area to represent the cells and then on the uh, uh, also this is the blood vessels and on this uh, wall of the blood vessel you will draw the nuclei of the smooth muscles here we have the uh, red blood cells inside the blood because it is congested here you will draw a shadow for the secretion which is uh, present in huge amount in this gland and then finally the lining uh, nuclei or the uh, nuclei of the lining cells and here we arrange the nuclei perpendicular to the base membrane of this gland representing the simple columnar epithelial lining and this is the secretion these are the congested blood vessel and this is the connective tissue fibers and nuclei now the last picture is the epidermis of the thick skin also you should draw lines to uh, um, guide yourself in the drawing uh, with a faint coloration and then you will draw this uh, uh, papilla connective tissue of the dermal papilla one papilla like this with the red color and then arrange the basal columnar oval nuclei a basal columnar cells with oval nuclei with this picture and then you will draw three lines area for the granular very faint area for the granular area for the clear and then this is the keratin in this area in between these cells and this area of the granular you should fill this area with the uh, polyhedral cells with the red color as much as possible and then you will draw two or three lines of these uh, uh, spindle shaped cells with the central oval nuclei and granular cytoplasm with the blue coloration granular layer and then the nuclei of the intermediate central rounded here the nuclear basal oval here we have a oval in the center and then you have this clear area clear area should be faint acidophilic faint acidophilic and then you will draw the keratin so it's better to make it some some textbooks uh, draw this area as uh, dark acidophilic some pale acidophilic no problem you can make it uh, pale pink coloration and this is the keratin here we have these uh, uh, ducts of the sweat glands and these are the keratin squames here by the uh, uh, red color and you can also add uh, with the unipole and this is the uh, picture finally as you can see this is after the final uh, shadowing of the different areas the basal cell layer brachial cell layer granular cell layer clear layer and the keratin layer thank you very much Best wishes for all.